So we are back with your Q&As. We have got the penultimate one now, and it is your VP Sports Development. If you guys would like to come to the sofa. So full sofa here this time. Sports Development, the role is leading all things sport. VP Sports Development will look after 80 plus sports teams across the university. I've seen the socials and looking after this bunch isn't easy. <laughs> but with the Team Southampton brand to maintain, it's a varied role with scope to expand the sports zone in a multitude of ways. So we've got Roman, Jamie, Stephen and Ashley. Welcome to the sofa. Can you all actually order. fit on? Yeah. Is it OK? So. OK, good. Are we all, are we all in shock? <laughs> we couldn't have got any smaller people to sit on the sofa, really, could we? So. <laughs> right, so we will kick off with the first question of the night. But before that, can you all introduce yourselves? Hi, uh, my name's Stephen Barrett. Um, I'm a second year law student. I'm from the swim team, uh, and my campaign hinges really on professional accountable coaching and uh, outreach into the community. Hi, I'm Jamie. I'm um, a third year chemist. I'm currently the intramural officer, so I'm, my manifesto is working quite a bit on participation, and but not at the expense of performance. Hi there, my name's Ashley, I'm a third year economic student, I'm president of the Hockey Club and a member of the Cricket Club. Hi, my name's Roman, I'm a current third year mathematician, I'm the current president of the rowing team and my manifesto revolves around uh, better access to external funding and better communication amongst the clubs. So we've got a variety of degrees and sports here on the sofa. So let's kick off with the first question, it'd be interesting to see how you guys differ on these. Um, the first one came from Twitter. Do you think enough is done with sport to represent a diverse student body? So do you feel like the current selection caters to everyone? Who's going to go first? Should we start on the end? Um, no, I mean, I, I raised this in, in an interview with, um, with Matthew from Wessex Scene, actually. I, I'd like to see the, the AU president um, and uh, his officers next year uh, reach out to the different um, different groups that represent um, people from from all different from back backgrounds and ethnicities. And I'd like I'd like a dialogue um, just to talk about uh, any obstacles that that they are facing in, in getting kind of getting involved with with AU sport with intramural sport. Um, I think that we can't just wade in and kind of start telling these these people, you know, that, that they need to get involved. We need, we need to actually ask them if they if they have a problem and do some proper research and then I'd, I'd obviously work work with them after that. So Jamie, what do you think on uh, this? I, I, with the 90, 90 odd sports teams that's actually in the sports development zone, uh, I'd say that there's definitely a sport out there that if they want to join, they can join. It's just making sure that the barriers to joining are uh, overcome and making sure that they know how to get involved. Yeah, it's, like, what he said is true, but there's also, like you need to find out the reason why, like they, they might have like they might have a problem physically, like why they can't, like how the university can aid them, or like uh, they might struggle with like balancing their time, and like maybe if there's someone to help them balance their time and potentially take on joining a society, that would help them as well. Um, yeah, I think there's a <coughs> massive range of sports. One of the big problems I found, and a lot of people have said, is uh, it all hinges around the bun fight. So if they miss that one bun fight, they don't find out a lot about a lot of sports. So with 96 sports or 96 sports clubs, um, finding about finding out about the more unusual ones, say fencing, shooting, rowing, is quite difficult. And I, one of my main points is uh, to give clubs, but uh, we, they already have the access to book out the concourse and things like that to display their sports. And I think just advertising that a bit better to the clubs would make a huge difference. So obviously, four guys running for the role here on the sofa. No ladies running for this role this year. Do you feel like that you'd be able to include all of the, 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 the girls' needs as well? So is it really, truly diverse, the, the role? I, I actually think, think that that's a, a rather fatuous question. Um, I, I don't think that there, there need, there's going to be any issue o over gender. I, don't, I think all of our sports clubs you know, show equal representation between men and women and to imply that somehow we wouldn't we would treat women differently I, I just think I don't really understand why you've asked that no it's not it's not implying anything it's just asking obviously it's not the same representation we had last year when people applied for this role so obviously you have female only sports male only sports that's all we're asking I, I just think that the fact that there's four men is probably just doesn't doesn't really mean anything this year it's just the fact that 
I don't know. That's just the way the way it happened. I don't think you can read into that and say that somehow women are you know are not don't have a voice on the AU or, or, or women are, are neglected in sport. Um, that that would be my answer. Right. So I've been grilled now, so it's time we grill someone else. <laughs> Amelia, yes, do you want to ask a question? So I'm going to start with you, Jamie. Okay. You've mentioned um, that you want to restructure the bun fight. Yeah. Firstly, why and how would you do that? Right. Um, the reason why is because this year people were turned away. Um, they couldn't get in to see all the societies at all. Um, so therefore, I think that a change in how it's done needs to happen. Uh, obviously, it's working with the VP engagement to sort this out. Uh, and all of what I say is just what I'd like, but it has to be checked with them. Because it's not really in your role to it, actually It's not in my role, but I can push fight. for what the sports teams want because they were right at the end of the queue, so fewer people got to them. Therefore, it may have affected their... Um, take, intake. Uh, like Roman said, people couldn't find out about the clubs. So what I'd like to see is a like hop-in, hop-out system. So you can queue for the sports teams and go and see the sports teams. You can go and see all the other societies. That would be ideal. Um, whether it'll actually work for next year, because it's being planned sort of now already, uh, is a, another question, but it would be something good to have in future years. Okay. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, finances that come into this when you're joining a sport. There's sign-up fees, there's fees for kit. Um, how are you guys all going to encourage the students who struggle financially to be involved with sport? If we start with Ashley. Um, well, as I said in um, the debate on Saturday, uh, the entitlement card has been removed, which doesn't help at all, as you said. Like, people may struggle financially, and um, what you can look to do is look to implement a monthly uh, sort of payment scheme so that people can pay monthly, which might be slightly more feasible and if they want to suddenly stop, they haven't paid for the whole year, they've only paid for that month. Um, that's, the main, that's the main thing I can think of. Roman, what do you think about this? Um, I think, well, I'm looking into, uh, there are many external sources of funding and things like that, and I think hidden talent is one of the things which isn't really tapped into you. Um, I can understand membership fees, you know, that may be quite expensive, but normally the issue will be getting to events or actually entry fees, things like that. Um, and there are loads and loads of companies, such as Sport England, who are trying to reach out and want more people to get involved in sport. And that's that's kind of my one of my main aims next year is to help sports societies find this external funding and help support their players. And I'm sure it. That, that'll help in a, a long way, and I think it's, it is difficult because some people who are struggling don't necessarily want to say they're struggling financially. Um, but if I can help the sports team to help all members, I think that'll help in the long run. Well, Stephen, Jamie, what do you want to add to this quickly? Um, well, I, I think, first of all, you made a, a good point in, in that there's a finite amount of money, um, and the major part of this role is deciding how to allocate that money efficiently, and it's a lot of competing interests, and that's what made the jo makes the job difficult. Um, here at the university, we've got a really good office which uh, students can go to and try to find part-time work um, ar around Southampton. And that would be my fir first thing. It would be, if, stu if a student was struggling, I would, uh, I would ha advise my sports team presidents to encourage them uh, or to help them to look for a job so they can pay, you know, they can earn money to pay the fees. I, you know, there's a massive culture of entitlement, you know, amongst students, and that's fine. Certain students really need really need you know money centrally but there's other students who just can go out and get a job and pay which is how well Jamie what do well, you think well, for me uh, tier gym membership allowing students to pay for what they actually want to use so for instance I do quite a bit of intramural so there's quite a few teams I think it was 10 netball teams dropped out this year because they couldn't get a seven players who wanted to buy sport and wellbeing membership so tiered system for me is the most important thing uh, to help those students who are struggling financially to get involved obviously making use of external for, uh, sources and um, funding opportunities uh, and the alumni office will help massively with that as well. Okay, Amelia, grill time. It's interesting that you mess, mess, <laughs> message that you mentioned tiered membership um, because you all seem quite keen on it apart from you Stephen who seem more involved in coaching. Is that because of experiences you've had because you seem to have done a lot of coaching in the past? Yeah, I mean I I think actually, I mean, I know Ashley um, co coaches as well, and, I, and Jamie referees, and you know, and I'm sure Roman um, knows one of a, of a blade from the other um, at rowing. But um, you know, m why I, why don't I like tiered membership? Um, well, it, it's because it, instead of <coughs> catering for people that kind of aren't really sure about sport and might just want to go casually to the gym, 
and saying, okay, fine, pay less. We need to actually do the other, the other thing. We need to say to them, hey, you've got for 145 pounds an amazing set of facilities. Why don't you start swimming? You know, why don't you start going to classes? You've got all of this for 145 pounds. So the approach should not be, oh, let's appease these people and, and you know, and give them a, a fairly impractical tier gym membership, which sport and well-being are going to struggle to fund. The, the approach should be that, that outward looking, bring people into sport, use the facilities that we've got. We need to promote, we don't need to start you know, trying, to, trying to make things smaller, we need to make things bigger and better. Well, let's move on to a, second, a third real question for someone else. Okay, so Roman, I'm going to yep. bring this on to you. It is Roman, isn't it, by the way? Because I thought it was Ronan the whole time. That's and then I saw, I saw your campaign posters, and I thought it was very clever what you did, by the way. Um, so you've mentioned that it's all about the casual gym user, and you want to find a voice for them. Um, so obviously that's to do with the tiered membership as well. But how else would you actually do that? I want to elect a representative. So I think we've got intramural reps and you know, the presidents. But at the moment, people that just want to go to the gym and use it casually, they use the same facilities as everyone else. They have the same rights as everyone else, same pay, same pay the same amount of money. Um, so it's, it's all about feedback, and I think getting more feedback from people will go a really, really long way within the university. And I think a lot of the times, I'm not saying that, it, it would be a benefit to the AU members as well. I think one of the problems with saying this, and a lot of the times people that don't that run for this position, and I'm just as much culprit as they, appease uh, the AE members because they're the people that vote. I think if the casual members can get gain more feedback, get more feedback from them, get more information from them, then it will benefit both parties because then we can find session slots and the facilities can be booked out at times that appeal to both lots of users. And I think this will benefit everyone massively. And they often just fall through the cracks. So obviously it's a sports and well-being membership. It's not just sports. That's the key point of it. Do you guys not feel that there obviously you are catering for a group of people that aren't as included as sports as everyone else? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's one of the reasons that Katie's this year's worked to get a casual users forum, which will have casual users reps for well, but, uh, both Jubilee Gym, uh, the Team Southampton Gym, and also um, gender and race. They're all going to have reps on there. Is the current plan. Um, she's been working on that all year and hopefully it'll be in place to go ready for next year. Um, Ash, what do you think about the casual gym goer? Um, I think, I think um, yeah, like they sort of need a voice and like going back to the tiered membership, having a membership that's slightly cheaper for, uh, as you're saying, like financially, like people may struggle, having a slightly cheaper gym membership where you know they're just going to use the gym as opposed to the other facilities that are provided by sports and wellbeing such as wide lane, the pool, the dry ski slope having them just paying for the gym will be beneficial for them because they're getting the most of their money. Uh, Stephen, to wrap up the question, what I do you think? I just think more beneficial than them having an extra £30 in their pocket, which they're going to you know, waste on a few jester's trips, it would be more beneficial for them to actually use the ski slope, <coughs> and the track, and the key centre, and all the classes. And the, We've got the cheapest gym membership in the whole country out of any university. We need to advertise it better. We don't need to start appeasing casual gym users. Well, obviously each their own. There are people that want different things from this area of the union. We'll move on to another question. Um, aside from your experience in sports, we are looking beyond that for this role. It's not just about the sports. At university, what other relevant experience within SUSU as a whole do you have that will help you within this VP sports development role? Roman, if you want to kick off. Yeah. Well, as the president currently of the rowing team, everything I do has to go through SUSU, whether that's buying literally anything, insurance, going, entering race entries, everything goes to Susu. So I've worked with everyone in Susu who has to discuss every possible thing I have to do. All has to go through them. So I know what's involved in Susu. I've spoken with Katie met with her countless times. So I know exactly what her is like. Um, and just the role in itself, big time management and organisation um, prioritising so that's helped me out quite a lot, I think. Well, Ash, do you have any experience in SUSU other than sport? Well, like Roman just said, being president of the hockey club uh, is one of the biggest, bigger clubs in the AU. Like, one of the main things you've got to focus on is your time management, being able to do a degree, and all, as well as do all the admin side for the club. When you work with SUSU, like, as, as he said, he worked closely with Katie this year to get funding, to sort out any issues he had with uh, like when 
Bucks fixtures or when, well with the hockey club when you've got a problem you have to go straight to KT to sort it out such as um, we weren't able to field a team against Exeter last term so we had to go to KT and just like, what, what do we do like, we've, got, we've got no drivers we've got no one that can drive a minibus because people have lectures on a Wednesday like, and if it's marked at the end of the day you're here to do your degree and not to play sport so you know, there's, there's loads of little issues that you have to we're obviously really short on time yeah. on this because there's four of you just quickly are you two involved yeah. in any other societies other than sport uh, within SUSU I was vice president private rent JCR followed by president um, I've also been starting union council and as intramural officer I've had quite a good overview of the whole of the intramural programme which has been quite a big role this year having come over from sport and wellbeing Stephen any more experience other than I've sports I've had nothing to do with SUSU um, apart from sport. But I'm quite happy about that actually because it means I bring a totally fresh approach um, and, I, and I think that's really valuable. I was however on the Durham... But do you have an understanding of the well, way yeah, CC I mean, works? Well yes I do, obviously. Um, you know I think just through this process I, I've gained a pretty big insight in, into the way things work around here and I was on the Durham Student Union uh, when I was at Durham University um, so I do have quite a lot of experience of student politics before that, which again gives me, you know, I've had experience of another union, which is actually, you know, at a very good university, which is, again, allows me to bring outside experience to the table. Okay, well, obviously, we want you to round up your final points, just uh, 30 seconds each, just quickly go along the line. What are you going to bring to the role? What are your key points in your manifesto? Um, the main thing for me is that it's only a 12-month position, it's not a lot of time, and nothing absolutely massive is going to happen at that time, so what can I do? better communication amongst all the clubs, sport well being, AU, big thing. I want to make it so that people can come back after summer and just start playing sports straight away. Ash? Yeah, three points. I'm looking to reduce costs, improve transport for all the AU clubs when they travel to other universities, and then the communication between the intramural and the AU clubs as well as uh, the AU itself. Uh, yeah, I'll bring experience to the role, having been intramural officer this year. I want to get a tiered gym membership system in place so that students can afford uh, to play sport easier. Um, I want to get making sure that facilities are used effectively throughout the term and that there's a better system in place for pre-season training for all clubs. A Roman said there's only so much you can achieve in a year. Uh, that's not the approach that I'm going to take. I want to lay the foundations this year for the success that we're going to have as a university in sport in five, ten years time. Unless someone starts to have that kind of vision, we're just going to continue to bumble along where we are now. 20th place in Bucks, an irrelevant sporting in a sporting context and we're going to change that and we're going to have to start now a talk of legacy here on the sofa can we thank the vp sports candidates here in the studio thank you so that was your q a for sports development we have just got one more q a to go tonight and that is with your presidential candidates and that will be coming up in the next 10 minutes